Don't fall asleep because you might not wake up. That's what Jack Leach said to himself in 2019. That was when he had sepsis in New Zealand. Leach also has Crohn's disease. England has done everything they can to keep him fit and healthy, giving him the very best treatment to ensure that he can be ready when they need him. When selected, he's almost been a single-use entity on the field. Since that New Zealand tour, they've used him when and where he's suited. Leach has such a great test bowling average because England has waited for pitches that turn, or batters he has good matchups against. And then they turned up at the Gabba, a place that overseas spinners don't really work, where there is little spin, a team of left-handers, and they chose him over Stuart Broad's 524 wickets. Jack Leach got a lot of treatment from the Australians, one for 102 from 13 overs. England analyst Nathan Lehman once told me that we obsess too much over the selections of the 9th, 10th, and 11th best player in a cricket team. And he's right. So much of the cricket media and public's obsession is over players who make the smallest impact. Part of that is quite simply because we play so few tests and a poor selection becomes a story for days. And then we try and work out what would have happened with the road not traveled. The same has happened here with the non-selection of Stuart Broad. England is in trouble this test because they were dismissed for 147. Broad has improved his batting of late, but doubtful he'd have changed the score that much. The second innings he might have. Chris Wokes started poorly with the ball. Having Broad out there again would have been a simple way to regain control. And as Brisbane's biggest newspaper will grudgingly admit, Broad's bowled well there over the years for 12 wickets at 24.5, even if half of those wickets are from one innings. But what about the man they chose instead, Jack Leach? For a team with so much off-field support, he would seem to be one of the most baffling choices for a touring side in Australia for quite some time. Leach is a spinner who needs a lot of assistance off the surface. That's common, but he goes from everyday friendly finger spinner to Thanos on a ragging wicket. The best way to tell this is that Leach averages 21.49 at Taunton. In the rest of the UK, it's 32.68. That's also backed up by his average of 27 in Asia. And in five tests at home, he averages only 20 overs a match. That's incredibly low for a frontline spinner. So what kind of help does the Gabba give spin bowlers in the last five years then? Seeing him is averaging 27.7 compared to spins 53. Nathan Lyon is averaging 45 here in that time. And in the last 41 years, the Gabba has won five wicket haul to a tourist. John Embry's five for 80. Only Daniel Vittori has more than seven wickets in total there. This is the opposite of what Leach needs. The Gabba has a weird kink too. It actually gets tougher to take spin wickets the longer the match progresses. Wickets fail at 51.1 in the first match innings, but in the second that is 57.3. As most tweakers actually prefer the second innings, this isn't ideal. But it's terrible for someone like Leach who massively depends on the surface falling apart. In the first innings he averages 48.8, in the second only 21. Then there are the Australian batters, of which 4 of the top 7 and 6 of the 11 are left handed. Leach is like most left-arm orthodox bowlers, and he's kind of terrible against southpaws. Against right-handers, he's 24.7. Against lefties, that's 61.5. The problem for Leach is that Smith and Labuschagne, the right-handers, average over 40 against left-arm orthodox in the last five years. For Smith, that is, of course, a weakness of sorts. Really, only Pat Cummins, who is a poor player of spin generally, is weak against left-arm orthodox. That's not a lot of potential victims for Leach. Not that it matters anymore, but Stuart Broad has averaged 25.2 against left-handers in the last five years. And as you may have heard, he's been pretty good to David Warner as well. Australia was always going to target Leach because Stokes was under a cloud. And this was a way weaker bowling attack without James Anderson and Jofra Archer. Leach doesn't have a lot of weapons when someone attacks him on a flat pitch. If it's a left-hander without foot marks, he's kind of naked. But 25 overseas spinners have more than 20 wickets in Australia. Five of those have played a test this millennium. Only Jeff Miller of the England Spinners has an average under 30 with more than 20 wickets since World War II. Panasar doesn't even qualify, only taking 13 wickets at 49. Swan has 22 at over 50. The problem for most spinners is that generally side spin is more important around the world. But in Australia, side spin is helpful, but overspin needs to be with it. It's about the bounce. Most spinners could work this out, but they'd have to bowl in Australia over a couple of series to perfect it. They often get smashed in their first series and shelved afterwards. Your best chance of taking wickets in Australia is if you are tall or can master overspin. Weirdly, England have a tweaker like this in their group, Don Bess. 
He actually profiles like an Australian spinner for all of his problems with landing the ball where he wants it. And he would have been handy against a team of left-handers. Bess is in Brisbane at the moment. He just took four for 80 against Australia A. Australia attacked Leach almost twice as much as any other frontline bowler. And in his career, Leach has bowled 95.5% of his career pro deliveries with the red ball. He has 17 list day games and two T20s for 36 combined wickets. He basically has no white ball experience. England has protected him from these kinds of situations. And now here he was, in an Ashes test, being destroyed. Warner hit him for two big sixes. Travis Head and Manus Lubbershane basically scored two runs a ball from him. His wicket was from some good bounce, but mostly because Labashain was showing him the same amount of respect he would a fourth change club bowler. Fans and media suggested Leach bowled too flat, tossed up, aggressive, and straight. But the truth is, he bowled too much. Mo and Ali probably would have been their spinner if he was still playing. Dom Best would have been a decent backup with so many left-handers on display. England's treatment of Leach's health has been admirable. On the field, they used to select him when everything was in his favor, which obviously helped his record. If there was ever any problem, it was that they never let him develop other skills by using him only when suited. And they didn't always let him play that much at all. In 2020, he didn't play a test. This year, he didn't play at home. It's hard to go from a team of right-handers on ragging Indian wickets to a team of lefties on a spinner's graveyard with no tests in between. England are known to be meticulous with their planning for major series and tournaments. And then they turned up at the Gabba with a bowler absolutely not suited to the job in so many obvious ways. On the third day, England gave him the ball when they had run out of options. Of course, that is probably part of the reason he's in the team in the first place. Australia went after Jack Leach, but England's treatment was worse. 